So hello, hello everyone, and uh, uh, I would like to uh, share my limited but unique experience today. I'm quite happy to be with you, and then, uh, you know, I know the, uh, there are many more greater leaders uh, who have been accomplishing the better and the larger scale of uh, success and changes. But uh, today, uh, to be honest, uh, I'd like to share my uh, very interesting experience with you. Then I wish at the end of the day, uh, everybody could uh, pick up some of the good tips for your life. <clears throat> so before the start of my short presentation, uh, I'd like to let, um, you know, memorize my name first. I'm Nobumasa Ishii, and my nickname is Nobu, is the abbreviation of Nobumasa. Then it's a very reputable, uh, you know, Japanese cuisine restaurant, uh, New York, Lo Los Angeles, and Tokyo. Then you know they are using very uh, authentic uh, Japanese food material. Then decorated and grilled, uh, grilling. They are very under very global flavor. So it's like me. Then Ishii is quite difficult and quite uh, unpopular name in Japan. So please memorize that's now the seasonal po uh, pouring allergy. So coat and uncoat Ichi I. Okay. So my name is Nobu Ichi I. So my daily life is composed of uh, various uh, addictions. I wake up very early morning, the jogging, then a lot of coffee in the morning, so caffeine addiction, then generally workaholic through the day, then after seven, alcoholic. <laughs> so this time is I need a beer and wine like that. And then uh, at the end of the day, uh, long, you know, hours of global conference call, so called. So last two days, Monday and Tuesday, uh, particularly yesterday, uh, last night, uh, I went, ended up a conference call at uh, 12 30, then Monday 11. So I'm a little bit dizzy, then also without the alcoholic power, but uh, I'll try to the best. Okay. So today's main subject is uh, Taran. So Taran is a uh, what uh, is it like? It's like uh, running up the against a declining escalator. So which needs a lot of energy and power. And once you start it, you cannot you know, stop it until the success. Okay? So after, after you know, the turn around is you know, completed, so you can enjoy smooth growth, then you'll have a more relaxed time and think about many, many more great ideas and realize the life will be better and easier. <clears throat> Even you can look around and hoisting. Actually, I did this rehearsal four times. <laughs> <laughs> I was so exhausted, you know. But how, however, they, please in mind, you know, after, again, the success of life is coming back, but in some day, you will face, you may face the crisis mode in some time. Because, you know, the uh, currently uh, global environment is changing quite a lot, globally, regionally, and the country basis. And also, you know, the uh, life, uh, lifelong time of product it's becoming shorter, and the business model is uh, also shorter. So, you know, uh, while you are longer life in the business, uh, you will face two, you know, phases. The one is inevitably, yeah, inevitably, uh, you know, so-called turnaround mode. So, so I know that today uh, we have uh, many guests here from the diversified industries. But uh, it's quite common, I think, factor. So also, Thailand is a uh, condensed process. So while you enjoy the uh, you know boating, uh, then uh, suddenly the boat hit the rock under the water. The water is coming up and leaking to the from the bottom of a boat, boat. Then, what do you do? is we have to fight with time. Then we need uh, self-confidence, is uh, no panic, and then quick decision on the priority, 
and the quick action and the speed, then in the meantime, you have to set up the next new direction and restart consistent pace of work to move back. So all those, you know, uh, quite critical factors uh, we should do, implement in limited time. So this process is uh, commonly ap applied to phases of implementation uh, for all phases, like a startup, growth, restructuring, uh, innovation, and a one day. So it's, this is quite, you know, the condensed of essential uh, elements all together in short time. So it's also applicable to the longer range of uh, development process like R&D. So if we apply this process, you can get better result uh, compared with, uh, you know, the uh, current uh, condition. So people is a key to turnaround success. The turnaround is not just a restructuring. Step, uh, sorry, stop the uh, decline and restart growth. I think the financial restructuring uh, to only stop the breeding, uh, it is very essential and also very helpful in short time. Like a shut down the operations, reduce head counts, you know, squeeze expense, and also stop uh, payout of salaries. Altogether, you can stop bleeding once, but you cannot expect growth after that. So to restart growth, what is the most essential part? Because, you know, the, you know regrowth requires new product introduction or value added process better service and innovation, and uh, also, uh, you know, the, the differentiation of uh, operations. So what will realize that is people. So people is the most essential factor, but the most difficult factor too. Then people means, this is quite cynical, not, you know, head counts but brains and strong muscles. And also, people who are not always positive, you know, sometimes oppositely, very, very negative as a broadcast. So how to deal with people, how to motivate people, how to classify the people are the most important critical factors for turn around. So I listed uh, 10 breadth points uh, based on my experience. Uh, what we need to realize turnaround. The top of the list is a strong and experienced leader. So leader should create clear and, uh, vision and uh, create state and uh, analyze the gap and uh, quickly uh, set up the gap filling action list then start implementation and also demonstrate before and after stories to employees. Then third one is a set the due date and the retroactive re uh, milestones with the contingency plan. So most important thing is we have to set the DQ, uh, key date and never change it. Then retroactively re set up the milestones then we'll achieve one step after one. Then speed of ex uh, executions is also important. Then we have to create visible changes. Then elimination broadcast is the most effective way at the initial phase. Then uh, team building is the functional operations and the internal and external support. Then replacement of management. And dashboard and roll on executions is I'll explain later more details. Then achieve the milestone. At, at every single of accomplishment, uh, we have to celebrate the improvement, then also punish and eliminate DAR. Okay? 
So this is a, a very brief introduction of uh, three helpful tools which I used for TANAM. As one is a top three focus. This one. Uh, this is to create and also train the people to, to make a priority. And then that starting from the uh, executives top three focus, so that will really cascade it to the all people. Everyone in, the, in their working uh, behaviors, uh, they have to think about what, uh, what should be my top three focus. Then to the desk of each individual, uh, the, everyone should hang, uh, hang on their, their top three focus with their nameplate. Okay. So that will create ownership. Then second one is uh, selection and focus. This is a measure the, the quality of the people according to the requirement of the uh, company. They also classify the quality of people. <clears throat> so this is so-called uh, quality for deployment. Then uh, th this line, each column is, uh, should have an uh, essential element of the uh, requirement. So it will be changed according to the condition and also phase. Then uh, we list up the names of persons. If you have a 600, you list up 600 names here. Then uh, we will prioritize by different scoring, 931. So each, each box will show how much rate of the person will be, will, uh, will be <coughs> uh, calculated to the one of uh, so-called requirement element. Then finally, this sum will come up to the scoreboard. Then if you have 600 people, you can see one from top to the 600 at the bottom. Then also, uh, this is one is a very uh, centralized uh, control tower. <clears throat> so we will exclusively use one room, then hang up all key performance indicators and tangible targets on the wall. Then, uh, gathering the key managers uh, daily and also occasionally, then we'll check up the progress uh, every, every day. So we'll see the progress of that, and immediately we can make a direction. So this kind of very centric and very intensive uh, monitoring process and action-oriented uh, process. So those three are the free, uh, very helpful tools, but uh, it's not limited to. ECI-san, when you go to a new company uh, or a new client and you're starting a turnaround, how do companies find themselves in this position before you even start your turnaround process, before you start looking for new staff, stars in the organization, new strategies? What are the reasons why companies, at least in Japan, find themselves in such a mess? I think it's uh, maybe I can list up some of the uh, factors. Uh, I think it's, uh, the common features of the company uh, who will face the restructure mode uh, is uh, then that they don't have any power to turn around. Uh, I think it's, uh, we can, I can list up uh, some of the uh, symptoms. One is that they had the success in the past. Then they still are uh, insisting on their successful manner, then never open mind to accept changes. That's the first uh, feature. The second feature is uh, most of the cases, uh, they had, uh, I, I'll call they, uh, so those, those Japanese companies, they had uh, um, kind of dictators, uh, very strong leaders for long years. Therefore, they didn't have a good uh, so-called team and functional team and also successors 
and the capable talent under one dictator. That's second symptom. The third symptom is uh, always the organization is uh, uh, very fragmented and also uh, bureaucratic, then multiple layers. So always, uh, you know, qualification is quite unclear. The fourth symptom is, uh, I think, uh, uh, clarity is uh, not clear. I mean, what I mean is uh, financially and also uh, all reports are quite uh, you know, manipulated. Uh, then uh, I think uh, uh, very much behind our process and also even IT environment. Uh, there are some. Do you see any of these characteristics <coughs> as being um, perhaps more common in Japan versus other uh, parts of the world where you've done turnaround? Or would you say that these reasons are universal? Yeah, I didn't experience, uh, uh, I guess I, I might experience quite limited, but uh, I think it's kind of a sim similar symptom I could find out uh, uh, even multinational companies, like, uh, you know, likely uh, like invences are quite struggling. Then I could see some of the same similar symptoms in their organizations. But in Japan, I think uh, one dif difficult, different factor is uh, they don't uh, change people. Uh, that means uh, they cannot enhance uh, organizational capability. Uh, maybe culturally. That's a dif different factor compared with other Western companies. And the same maybe situation is Korea is quite uh, more aggressive and China currently at very larger scale companies, they adopted a uh, very quick decision, like higher. Uh, so I think it's Japan is a little bit different, I think. You, you mentioned one of the root causes is a dictator <coughs> leader, uh, maybe a daimyo style, a mm. feudal mm. style. In executing turnaround, how much of a dictator do you have to be in order to do the turnaround? Uh, in, in, uh, to, to change, to make a change? I think it's, uh, uh, if I count out uh, two key positions, one is finance, the other is HR. Those two are the bottom line. Then uh, we'll just replace uh, maybe next uh, uh, priority is uh, marketing and the strategy. And then sales will be the end. I think they are communicating with customers day to day. So maybe finally uh, we'll change it, but uh, uh, I'll start from the uh, brain and the nerves first. And do you do that <coughs> in a top-down style, or do you do it more <coughs> consensus approach? For example, with the chief sales officer, chief marketing officer, mm -hmm. head of HR. Do you do it as a consensus team, or do you prefer to do it more top-down? I think it's very, it's very much case by case. It's quite an emergent case uh, top down, but uh, if we, I can allow, I, we, we could be allowed some of the time, uh, I always communicate, I, I, I should always communicate. Uh, at, at the beginning, uh, uh, you know, I, I'll check the three flows. One is uh, money, the second is uh, product and so-called service, and the third one is uh, people. How how uh, I'll check it is if, uh, money is uh, you know the always uh, customer centric. So how money is coming from customers? Then through what uh, different process? Then finally that will lead to us. Then finally how that will be uh, used for you know uh, like a material and so on. So always starting from customers. Then we could see where we can we have a redundance, where we have a, a waste. So that's for money. Then product and service also starting from customers. 
uh, in case of product, uh, I don't know, like uh, starting from customers, warehouses, distributors, you know, then also to us. Uh, so then we, will, of course, you know, uh, immediately can you know find out can find out the uh, waste in between the people. I'm always going down to the bottom of the operations, uh, even you know temporary staff and operators. Uh, we'll discuss and uh, always check up the one uh, you know single direct report lines the bottom, then starting from the bottom. I will interview uh, you know, most of the uh, people in the same line. Then I can immediately ident identify where is the loss. And maybe we can eliminate this reporting line. And uh, maybe we can you know, consolidate this line with this line. So such idea is coming soon, I think. So three uh, flows, uh, so-called tracking, that's quite helpful to get uh, very clear view of the business. Let's <coughs> talk about the cost reduction part and we'll talk <coughs> about the revenue and growth part later. In all the restructurings that you've done, in all the turnarounds, do you see a pattern uh, where there are um, key initiatives that are executed first or tend to be executed first? For example, uh, do you see IT popping up a lot? Mm -hmm. uh, do you see mm, supply chain popping up? Uh, call center outsourcing. Are there certain things that you see coming up over and over and over again in your turnaround activities? I think it's, uh, uh, you know, because it always depends on the time, allowance. once. But uh, uh, usually I you know, make some of the uh, total pictures. So from the functional basis, so HR, IT, like, uh, you know, the manufacturing, uh, sales marketing, uh, strategic planning, and all functions in the list. Then uh, first we think about some correlation, uh, what decision should be first. It's always, uh, you know, require the, and also have some correlation with other functions. So we will clarify the so-called, uh, uh, you know, the uh, correlation then what we should start first, then how you know, the other functions will follow that. So we'll make such a process map clearly at the beginning. Then almost uh, uh, try to cover the necessary changes, uh, most of it at, at the beginning. So then, uh, of course, you know, the, uh, under time frame, we will follow up the remaining part but uh, such a priority and uh, functional correlations is uh, always uh, will clarify at the beginning as a one clear process map. When you consider the cost <coughs> reduction activities and then the revenue uh, increasing activities, <coughs> revenue enhancement activities, um, ideally, uh, I would think you'd like to do both at the same time. Um, however, if you do not have enough resources or enough money to do it, which one do you do first? I think it's always uh, uh, we have to think about uh, so-called growing factors. So even though under limited uh, resource, uh, but also it depends on the time allowance, but uh, uh, what I, I, I do usually is uh, separate the uh, resource. They're, they're almost the one part should concentrate on restructuring. The other part will concentrate on growth strategy. But uh, you know, of course, numbers of uh, headcounts are quite limited in, for growth side. But uh, always giving the uh, very high pressure to both of two, then, then we will never give up the growth side scenario together with restructuring. <coughs> I remember <coughs> some time ago when we were having lunch, I asked you, uh, how long does it take for you to develop uh, a new strategy or a new direction? And I remember you telling me that you like to announce the direction yeah. basically within the first few days. Yeah. The details may not be there, yeah. but you basically tell the game plan at least within the first week. Yeah. Uh, it's very aggressive manner, but uh, what I did was, uh, uh, actually, I'm also I did it in the current company, is uh, uh, it's very 
very aggressive uh, in time frame. Uh, within three days, uh, we will announce the uh, direction. Uh, then it's very, you know, maybe abstract, but uh, where, where we should go and why, then also the uh, explain before and after at within three days. Then within three weeks, this is much more aggressive, you know, the, we will change some of the repressed people. Then within three months, uh, you know, whatever, we can pick up some of the uh, low hanging fruits, but uh, we will demonstrate the already changes and accomplishment within particularly tangible change uh, by visibly. And also in the meantime, so-called discipline is most also important. So it's not difficult to clean uh, you know, the housekeeping and it's not difficult to, you know, the appraise people. So such a visible changes, uh, we, we have to demonstrate within three months. Three days for vision, three, three weeks, some of the change of people, three months, uh, tangible result, a visible result. That's, that's kind of my style goes. How do you handle the following situation? <coughs> it's day one, you go in, you're introduced by the board uh, to the employees of the company. Day three, you come out with a direction. But, you know, you have employees who have worked in the company for 15, 20, 25 years, even more. Mm -hmm. And I would assume that a natural reaction would be, well, who is this guy? He just came off the street. He mm -hmm. knows nothing about our company. He doesn't know our products. Um, there's obviously a corporate culture. Everybody is very proud of, you know, the Boeing way or the AIG way. Or there's a <laughs> GE way. Everybody yeah. has their own way. Yeah. And they think it's somehow unique. Um, and they look at this guy coming as a kind of a cowboy maverick with his three-day plan, um, just in time for Easter. And uh, they're going to say, well, why should I believe any of this? Why don't I just do what I've always done for the past 20, 25 years? Besides, this guy may not even be here in a year anyway. How yeah. do you handle that? Yeah, I think it's uh, uh, maybe uh, my character is helping that, I think. <laughs> because uh, you know, my style is uh, quite, uh, how can I say, very very much uh, uh, so-called relaxed, I mean, right? And uh, I'll start also with a uh, lot of humor. That's very important. And also the, uh, for introductory process, uh, always we ask the, uh, the initial uh, session uh, with uh, key managers, direct reports. Uh, it's kind of, uh, maybe some of, them, some of you have uh, also experience. Uh, for introductory processes, uh, just as key managers and uh, let them, uh, think about what they know me and what, what they don't know me and they, what they, you know, they want to be known by me and what they want uh, expect me. So those four you know, things, you know, then they will discuss internally and then come up with their feedback and always I'm out of room. So they feel more intimacy after that. So it's more how to create communication, you know, it's very friendly and deeper in short time. So my study, I'm going to, you know, the almost everyone at the first day to shake a hand, you know, smile. So it's not like uh, just top down style. I would imagine <coughs> that there are at least three reactions. One reaction will be, it's great, there's a new boss. Uh, I didn't succeed under the old boss. Now I have a new chance to reboot my career in this company. Mm -hmm. That could be one group of people. Another group of people would say, well, I don't know, maybe it's good, maybe it's bad. Mm -hmm. um, I still have to pay my rent at the end of the month and I need the job and I'm not gonna quit. Mm -hmm. Then there's the third group of people who would say, I'm gonna do everything in my power to make sure this new president doesn't succeed. I'm going to stonewall him. I'm going to go counter to his initiatives. At what point do you see group two and three turning in your favor? 
When yeah. do you win them over? Is that, you know, after the first three months, yeah. after a year? <coughs> when do they begin to, or do they? Do they stay like that until you sell the company? Mm -hmm. It's very much uh, <laughs> like a G-style. It's uh, uh, like, like under some measurement. Uh, I, I, sh I showed you the one of the uh, you know, manner how to measure people. Then in which uh, uh, you could see some of the columns is like acceptance of changes and also, you know, the energy energize and such a stuff, you know. Then finally, uh, you know, we uh, classify the people by under nine blocks, like a performance based. The best performer is one, then second is two, then, then not so good performer is three, one, two, three. Then uh, it's cooperative to the corporate direction. I mean, uh, with me, is uh, A, B, C. So classify the people into the nine blocks. Then usually A1 is quite uh, limited, like uh, less than 5%. Five, five, five then B is a very much larger chunk. Then C3 is a, it's a low performer and negative. That's, uh, you know, no question to remove. But before that, uh, the most difficult part, part but uh, it's a uh, tough decision, but the uh, best way after that is uh, she won. is a great performer, but the most resistant. So, you know, that's, I mentioned that one of the very critical factors for Thailand is uh, eliminate brokers. So, you know, without you know, elimination, nothing could be achieved. So that is a difficult, but uh, best way to do fast. Then people is watching that, then almost the uh, majority in the box B will follow to A side. Then some of the, you know, in between, like uh, sheep people will also change mind to follow the now new majority. So it's kind of magic, but uh, it's very tough, you know, actually. Uh, yeah. How do you define success? When do you know that you've won or that you're winning at this? Winning is, of course, you know, if we expect, uh, you know, larger, you know, always, you know, how is coming up, right? But at the beginning, uh, you know, if we, the, you know, the numbers in red, so, uh, you know, we quick come back to the, you know, even. Then also we have to prepare some growth scenario together. That will be the first win, okay? Then continuously we can keep beyond uh, even. So from uh, negative to positive, that's the first move. Then if we can achieve that continuously uh, six months, that may be the first success. Then how we can grow the, you know, business, uh, which was prepared, that will be the, all, all together, that will be the first win. But because, you know, we, we, you know, we are always quite, it shouldn't be demand, demanding at the beginning, right? Because it's already company had some of the disease, sick, right? And even going to die. Mm -hmm. So firstly, how to live. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, I see. Um, <coughs> <clears throat> With regard to the <coughs> revenue side again, one thing that uh, I got from your presentation, uh, as a leader, you have to uh, be mindful, of course, of the cost, but at the same time, you're an entrepreneur or an intrapreneur, mm -hmm. so to speak, in the company. Yep. You may be creating new products, new lines of business, new service, and so forth. Uh, the entrepreneurial way or the entrepreneurial spirit is often killed in big bureaucratic organizations. Mm. Uh, decisions that have to be made quickly, mm. implementation <coughs> that has to be done, uh, creativity <coughs> and so forth. How uh, do you uh, create the entrepreneurial spirit in your company for the top line revenue growth mm. when you're doing a turnaround? Yeah, at first is, uh, uh, I, I, I interviewed uh, most of the employees uh, I think uh, not only for their uh, direct report, but to the bottom. Uh, you know, the it's very, you know, 
time consuming. But uh, then selected some of the good uh, aggressive talents. And in the meantime, uh, also this was one of the weaknesses of the Japanese companies at most of the cases, uh, they are not utilizing external support. So in the meantime, we always ask uh, external support, like a professional uh, firm, professional marketers, uh, professional uh, advisors. So very openly. So that's, uh, in the short time, that's also very helpful. But is more, so how to select is very important. You know, they, it's, they are just, uh, you know, this theoretically, you know, very academic you know, advice that we don't need, you know, but more pr practical and, uh, and also very, you know, uh, experienced. But uh, if we, we can seriously look for that, we can find that. So everything is uh, how we are serious. But uh, one of the weakness, again, of Japanese companies, they are not, you know, uh, asking support from outside. They are always trying to do everything uh, in their hand, internally. So that is uh, one of the game change. Why do you think they <coughs> do that? Is it a matter of pride? Uh, is it they uh, are simply buried in process? Why is there that mindset? Yeah, I think that compared with uh, uh, multinational companies, uh, through my very limited experience, but already I've been working for their uh, Western companies more than, almost, sorry, if you, at my age will be, you know, <laughs> but uh, more than 25 years. And then compared with Japanese companies, uh, I think it's functionally, uh, it's less, uh, professional Japanese companies. So. so they are not pursuing the quality of uh, function and uh, qualification. So that's the different, I think. Uh, then, then therefore, the, uh, you know, the, we have to create professional, pro so that's the point of, uh, that's not headcount. Brain and strong muscles. That's the point. So we need really great talents. So again, the people is the most important part. Uh, is it, uh, I can answer to your question now? <laughs> we, we certainly did. Yeah. Yeah. Do uh, <coughs> consulting firms, for example, strategy consulting firms, do they play a role when you are developing your uh, vision in the first three days? A lot of people will say, well, how can he possibly do that? He just arrived, and on day three, he's pointing the company mm -hmm. in a certain direction. Mm -hmm. um, where do you get your insights from? Yeah, may, yeah maybe, may, I think it's quite, uh, you know, the unbelievable story, but uh, before start of a new appointment, uh, very much under very limited, but uh, uh, even short time, but uh, proactively, I, of course, you know, before the start of my new appointment, I studied company already and gathered the information. Um, then almost uh, I could have a picture already. Then even though it's quite rough, but uh, not so different, so different. So always I quick, proactively, uh, I started preparation. So, so maybe my work, work, work life balance is quite. <laughs> Say, lucky me. Um, but at any rate, something that I did learn from you uh, a number of years ago, you taught me that you got from your mentor, Jack Welch. He said that it's far better to release somebody, uh, for example, at an earlier age, when in their 20s, where they can go and find uh, a job <coughs> with a good fit that's more suitable, rather than keeping a person until in their 40s or 50s under the misguided notion that you're doing them a favor, you're helping them, you're providing some kind of a social community service to the company. Because when that person eventually has to be released, it's far, far more difficult for them to find a new life and a new fit. Um, Jack Welch, uh, you knew Mr. Welch, uh, you studied under him, you worked for him. Uh, he had quite an influence on uh, your mindset and in uh, your approach, not just to turnaround, but in leadership. 
What are some of the things you can share with us uh, about Mr. Welch and what you learned from him? Yeah, I, I think maybe I can share some of the <coughs> passion by him. Uh, I have a long story with him. Uh, uh, do you know, maybe everybody knows the very famous uh, Crotonville course at the GE uh, College, uh, centered in uh, close to New York, Crotonville. Then uh, at the, road, the last day of the three weeks of long, sesh, long you know, the studies, the courses, uh, Jack Willis is uh, appearing and uh, talking with uh, all so-called participants. Then uh, I was there, then uh, I asked very, very critical question, but uh, usually, you know, before the start of his uh, uh, personal sessions, uh, HR yeah, joined, then uh, and they had uh, some preparatory meetings with uh, all participants. And they are uh, sharing their uh, you know, prohibited questions, like uh, you know, personal requests, like my salary is too low, you know, such a stuff. And the criticism to the company, also not good. So we are so much, you know, they're a uh, little bit scared, even nervous, you know, like what type of question is best. And, uh, however, no question is also not good, so you know, it's quite scared. So, but I had the very, you know, interest to ask, you know, then, because I, I had been, you know, considering such a question for all long days. Then I asked what, what it was, was uh, you know, the Jack, you know, you have, uh, you are always creating, uh, uh, you know, new so-called cultures, like uh, 3S, Simplicity, 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 uh, self-confidence, uh, and also this, uh, you know, the speed, right? Then uh, four E is uh, energy, energize, execution, edge. So, Jack, uh, you are creating, uh, you know, new cultures, but uh, what is exactly is your, you know, creative process? How did you create this? You know? Then he pointed uh, to the HR general manager to the end of the row. Then he. Mentioned. Oh, this is very, very critical question. <laughs> My goodness, <laughs> I was so scared. But uh, he came to me and uh, held my sh shoulders. Then he mentioned, "No, but this is very good question." Uh, before that, I made some of the upper polishing. Uh, Jack, uh, sh sh as a CEO, CEO means the chief energizing officer. So how do you think this question? So he was smiling. So anyway, uh, then uh, what was our, uh, his answer was, uh, you know, the to change, to make a change, uh, you have to be crazy, be crazy. Because, you know, while you are, you, you are, you are crazy, you cannot feel any fear, right, fear. Then you cannot feel any threat. So at every single morning, if you see mirror in your front, you will ask to the mirror, to your face, are you crazy enough? Because, you know, because, <coughs> yeah, that's great uh, reference. Uh, it's quite, you know, do you know the dashboard, the speedometer of the dashboard? Then if you can, you know, change the, you know, the uh, angle of, uh, you know, the needle, is from zero to five degree, it's easy. To 50, easy. But to 180, you need a lot of energy. So you have to change from here to here, right? So be crazy, no. So that was his answer. So my point is, uh, yeah, I faced uh, very difficult situations and uh, uh, sometimes I was quite, uh, you know, Wondering, I, I was Japanese, so I, you know, the, uh, I was, uh, you know, not, uh, you know, the warm-hearted. But always, uh, you know, I decided uh, I have to be crazy enough to change, because that's the requirement. So make change is our life. Now we're Ishii san and uh, I'd like to uh, wrap up and express a vote of thanks. When I hear you speak, um, I think of what are the characteristics of leaders um, that I have noticed, I should say, mm -hmm. the characteristics among the best leaders. They have a logical approach. They have a collaborative ability. 
to work with other people. Um, they have courage. And I found that most of the important attributes of good leaders fall into those three categories. And if a leader is lacking in one or more of those categories, <laughs> yeah. the leader is substandard. The lights are green in all of these categories, clearly when it comes to you. Mm -hmm. You're a man of courage, but you're not a kind of a John Wayne gutsy cowboy who <laughs> goes in. You have the courage to take yeah. a stance yeah. based on a very logical premise yep. that is well researched. You've <clears throat> done your homework before you got into the company and you continue to do your homework yeah. when you are during the, during the turnaround. And you have collaborative ability where you're able to work with other people, which I think leads to the most important or the most, um, the most credible definition of a leader that I've seen and that's not somebody who orders somebody around. Mm. That is somebody who co-creates an outcome with other people, an outcome that they could not otherwise achieve by themselves. And uh, for me, that's what makes you uh, not only a fantastic leader, but my mentor for uh, a good many years. So I thank you for spending time with us, uh, and I'd like our studio audience to join me in uh, showing our appreciation to Ishii Aisan. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you very much.